Scientific notation is another very important topic to be familiar with in a statistics class. So let's do a quick review. The general form of a number in scientific notation is a number between 1 and 10, then multiplied by 10 raised to a power. And as you're going to see in some examples in just a minute, sometimes that power of 10 will be positive and sometimes it will be negative. Okay, so let's jump in and look at an example. Consider the number 3 trillion. How would I take this number and write it in scientific notation? Well, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put a decimal point somewhere in this number where I can create that initial value between 1 and 10. And the logical place to put my decimal point in this number where I can create a number between 1 and 10 would be right after the 3, because then you can imagine that my number is either 3 or you could write it as 3.0. And then we need to think, if, we're, if we have 3 or 3.0, how many times do I need to multiply it by 10 to get to 3 trillion? And that's going to be what the power of 10 is to complete our scientific notation. So you can, you can remember that every time you multiply by 10, you're adding a 0 onto your number. So if I, if I had 3 or 3.0 multiplied by 10 to the first, it'd bring me here. 10 to the second, here. 10 to the third, 10 to the fourth, fifth. 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 3.0 times 10 to the 12th gets me to 3 trillion. So in scientific notation, 3 trillion is 3.0 times 10 to the 12th power. Now your calculator actually does something really cool. And uh, when you put numbers, really large or really small numbers into it, and I'll show you this right now, your calculator is going to many times give you that result in scientific notation. But the formatting might look a little bit different. So let's, let's write down what the calculator has here. So the calculator presents this as 3E12. And you're going to see this a lot throughout this class. Um, and basically I'm pointing this out right now because I want you to know that when you see something like 3E12, that that is exactly 100% the same as a number like 3 times 10 to the 12th. Okay, all right, let's look at another example. So now, uh, let's take a look at an example where we have a really small number between 0 and 1. And we're going to actually see tons of examples like this throughout the class because since we work with probabilities in this basic stats class, a lot of probabilities are always going to be between 0 and 1, and a lot of probabilities are going to be really small numbers, sometimes just a little bit above 0. So how would you take a number like, Point zero 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 four five, and write that in scientific notation. Well, again, we know that we have to follow the general format. So we have to think about this a times 10 to the b. And so a is a number between 1 and 10. So where can I put my decimal point, kind of move my decimal point for a second here, so that I can start with a number between 1 and 10? And you'd be correct if if you're thinking, put it between the 4 and the 5. So, so I'm going to start by putting my decimal between the 4 and the 5. So my A value is going to be 4.5. This time, we need to think, if we start at 4.5, how many times am I going to be moving that decimal to end up at my original number here? Now before, remember, every single time you, in the previous example, when we multiplied by 10, we were adding a zero. In this case, what we're actually doing when we move the decimal point to the left is we are dividing by factors of 10 each time. So what we're going to do is we're going to count how many times we are moving this decimal point. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And so I would actually write this number as 4.5 times 10 to the negative 8 power. Um, and just real quickly, so that you can understand a little bit more of what's going on here, 10 to the negative 8 power is the exact same thing as 1 tenth to the 8th power. So you can think of 1 tenth to the 8th power in a couple ways. You could think of that as dividing by 10 8 times in a row. Or you could think of it as multiplying by one-tenth eight times in a row. 
So again, just to kind of compare this with what we were doing in the previous example, in the previous example, we started with a really large number. We put the decimal after the three, and then we multiplied by factors of 10, and we did that 12 times to get to our end result. And in this number down here, we put our decimal between the four and the five to start with 4.5, and instead of multiplying by factors of 10 to get to our end result, we divided by factors of 10 eight times to get to our end result. So I was just trying to give you a little bit of background about exactly why, why this works and what this, this negative means. But for the most part in this class, what you're going to be doing is the same process that we did in both of these examples. You will put the decimal in such that you will create a number between 1 and 10, and then you're going to be moving that decimal either to the left or to the right. If you're moving the decimal to the right like we, we did up above, then we had a positive exponent. If you're moving the decimal point to the left, like we did here, you would have a negative exponent. Okay, so while, we're, while we are still on this problem, let's take a look at how the calculator is going to handle us entering this point 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, Okay, so let's, let's see if I can enter this correctly here. So we have 0. Point, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 zeros, and then 4, 5. So if I enter that into the calculator and press enter, there you go. You get very similar notation to what we saw before. Uh, this time it is 4.5e minus 8. And again, 4.5e minus 8 is the exact same thing as 4.5 times 10 to the negative 8. So you're going to see this throughout this class, and you're going to try to remember that this notation means precisely what we have right here. Okay, let's take a look at a few more examples now. Um, so in this example one, we are going to express the number 0 .000378 in scientific notation. So to follow my rule from previously, I'm going to put my decimal point in here in a place where my A value can be between 1 and 10. And I can see that that A value is going to be 3.78. And then in this case, I am going to be starting at 3.78 and ending up at my original number by moving the decimal to the left, one, two, three, and four times. So I know my answer here is going to be 3.78 times 10 to the negative four power. And again, times 10 to the negative four, basically all that tells me is that I was dividing by 10 each time to get to my end result. Okay, and let's look at B. Express the number 0 .0000025 in scientific notation. So once again, put your decimal point in a place where your A value is going to be between 1 and 10. That's going to be 2.5 in this case. And then we can see, once again, we're going to be moving to the left. We're dividing by 10 instead of multiplying by 10. And so we're moving to the left once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times to get to our original number. So 2.5 times 10 to the negative 6 is your answer here. And just like I was showing you previously with the calculator, if you were to enter these numbers into your calculator, you're going to get a result in scientific notation. And so, you know, you, you can try to remember the rules and all of that, but you do have the calculator there as an added support. Okay, we have a couple more examples. And this time what we're going to be doing is we're, we're going to be starting with the numbers in a scientific notation, and then we're going to be converting them back to standard form. So if I take the number 4.5791e minus 3, what that means is I have 4.5791 times 10 to the negative 3 power. And since it's a negative power, then that tells me that what I need to do is go to my decimal point and I'm going to be moving that number of places to the left. Or essentially, you're dividing by 10 three times, or you could think of it as multiplying by 1 tenth three times. But you were going to move this decimal point three places to the left. So I just moved it once, twice, three times. There's my decimal point. So I have 0 0.00. 
four, five, seven, nine, one. Okay. And then just to check yourself, you can go back and think about doing it the other way, where you put the decimal between the four and the five. So you'd have the 4.5791, and then you know you would move it one, two, three places to the left. So that would be 4.5791 times 10 to the negative three. Oh, and we're supposed to round our answer here to four decimal places. So let's let's be particular with that. So our answer is going to be 0 0.0045 or potentially 0 0.0046. So let's think about this. I'm going to circle the number following my rounding digit. And since that number is greater than or equal to five, then this rounding digit is going to go up one. And so my final answer here to four decimal places will be 0 0.0046. Six. Okay. In example D, let's express the number 1.9375 times 10 to the negative 4 in standard form. And so, once again, you start at the decimal point, and since we're multiplying by 10 to the negative 4, that's like dividing by 10 four times or multiplying by 1 tenth four times, we're going to be going to the left four times. One, two, three, four. Put our decimal point back in and we can fill in our zeros. And so we end up with an answer of 0 0.0001975. But once again, let's focus on our rounding. We are going to be rounding to four decimal places. And rounding to four decimal places, you can see that we have one, two, three, four numbers after my decimal point right there. And I'm going to be looking at the number following my rounding digit. Since that is greater than or equal to 5, my rounding digit is going to go up by 1. My final answer here is going to be 0 0.0002. Okay, one last example here in this video. Okay, so let's take 1 sixth raised to the fifth power, enter this into the calculator, and then round our answer to five decimal places. So this is a typical type of a calculation that you would make in this class. So we enter 1 divided by 6 in parentheses, and then to raise it to the fifth power, I'm going to click on this button right here, this caret button, raise to the fifth power, and then I press enter. And what do you know? You end up getting an answer from your calculator that's in scientific notation. So let's write this down. So we have 1.286. Eight two three, and I'm going to write this as times 10 to the minus 4. Okay, and I know that since it's got a negative exponent right there, that I am going to start at my decimal point, and I am going to move four places to the left to get to my number in a standard form. So this is going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 places to the left. It will end up with 0 0.0001286008230823. So that's a really long decimal, but we're only going to be rounding this to five decimal places. So let's indicate to ourselves one, two, three, four, five places and identify the number after our rounding digits. We had five numbers after the decimal and then the number after the rounding digit. Since the number after the rounding digit is greater than or equal to 5. It's 8 in this case. We are going to round the rounding digit up, and so our final answer here to five decimal places will be 0 0.00013. So that is our final answer here. So probably the most important aspect of this entire video is just noticing that the calculator is going to use this e in place of times 10 raised to a certain power. And so you will see this a lot throughout the class. Please just uh, hopefully remember some of the things that you saw in this video. And again, let your instructors know if there's anything else we can help you with. Thanks a lot.